hello people at my shop again and no compressor running today but as you can see I have taken the motor apart and I would like to do a video about how to take apart an electric motor I have already done this so I can show you what I did but I can tell you what I did and the first thing I did and what I really recommend doing is fastening the motor to a table or something like a table. It really helps when taking things apart. And when I got it on my table, the first thing I did, I unscrewed this screw that holds the pulley in place. And then I tried to use my puller to the aluminum wheel, but because this is aluminum, I didn't want to use a lot of force. And it didn't come off with the amount of force that I wanted to put on it. So the next thing I did, I put some heat on this. I used my propane torch to heat this up a little bit, and that helped a lot. It came out real nice. And what I did next, I took off this fan cover from here. It was only on with these four screws. And the screws went to these holes on this backup. And then there was this fan. It was on these splines. I loosened the screws right here, and then using a screwdriver, I applied the fan out of the splines. It was pretty tight. And what I did next, um, I first, when I had at the end cap on like this, I tried using my screwdriver right here and here. And also on the down downside and it did come off a little bit but then it didn't come anymore but what I did next to get the rotor off this axle has a center hole in this side also so I put my pulling tool like this in there and then I used my hammer right here and it came out this way really easily just a little bit tapping with a hammer and then I was left with the situation that I had this bearing right here in its place right here and I had this one on it, the end cap on. And what I did next, again, I used my pulling tool like this. I set the center right here to the center hole and the jaws behind here. And it only took a little bit of pressure to pull it off this bearing housing. It is supposed to be a press fit, but it's not very hard to pull it off anyways. But you cannot, well at least I couldn't do it with my hands. And next thing to do is to take off the key. Which was in here. And it was really tight. And what I had to do to get it off, I put it on my vice. I put it on my vice like this, with the axle on, of course. And I screwed it really tight. And then, when it was on this side, uh, on the vise, I just rocked this side. And after three tries, tries, I think, the key finally came out. And it took a little bit of a beating, so I think I'll have to get a new key. New key. These are available at any hardware store. The same place you're gonna, you're gonna get the bearings. 
And the next thing to do, and the last thing to do also, was to get the bearings out. And as I showed you, the bearings sit right here in their seats. And again, I used my pulling tool to pull the bearings out. And they are pretty tight, but they come out with this good sized puller pretty easily. I first took this side and then the other side. And remember to take the key off before taking the bearings off. Unlike I did, I first run the bearing against the key and things got a little stuck, but I got things freed again. And if you want to clean this rear end cap, it was right on here. After I've got the shaft, everything off the shaft, this was still on here. And I got it off by hand. And I think I'm gonna clean this surface right here. And also this one. And this is what the motor looks like inside. Looks pretty good to me. I've still got the test set up, hooked up. But as you can see, the cable is right there, so it's not under power right now, of course. And never do anything like this if the motor is under power. I think you know that yourself too. So, what's gonna happen next with this motor? I'm gonna get two new bearings. They are the same size and this key. And about the bearings, the rear bearing is just fine. I think it might be just as good as new, but the front one is not good. I can feel it vibrating a little bit. I think this bearing is bad. So it was a good idea to take this apart. And I guess the new bearings will cost like 5 euros each. And the key maybe 1 or 2 euros. So, this is an easy repair, pretty easy. All you need is a puller, and if you have an aluminum pulley, I really recommend you to use heat on the hub to get it off easier. Because this is maybe only 5 mm thick, and if you pull hard enough, you will break this. Okay, I think this is the end of this video. I hope this helps any of you. It sure would have helped me if I had seen this video before doing this job. And by the way, this is 4 kilowatt Italian made motor. You can see the number plate. And it is of my Ingersoll Rand air compressor. Right there. And in the end of this video, I think I'll show you quick what I did today. I've got my TIG welder in a little more compact package. Until now, I've had this tank on the floor and no wheels or anything with it, so it's really being a pain in the ass to move this welder but it is now all in one piece and how this cooler works it has a 12 volt electric pump right here and to get 12 volts I have a car battery charger which of course which needs 230 volt one phase power and I I used one face and zero from inside my welder and put a fuse and a button on. So when I press this button, this charger will get power and it will run the water pump. And I also got some extension to the hoses, which were too short also. So I'm really happy about this. It's working great now and it's very easy to move.
it has wheels on it. Oops. And I also did something to my my oldest earth, Esob MIG welder. I put a new nice roll of one millimeter wire on it and I took apart the welding cable and I cleaned it completely and the wire feeder also. And I put a new ground clamp on. This is pretty heavy duty clamp. You can see it has very thick copper wires in it. This should be good for quite a few years. And where do I have the old one? I can't find it right now. Oh, here it is. This is not what an earth clamp should look like. This is what the old one was like. And it really didn't do a good job at all. Thanks for the years you served me. Yeah, I did some tests on this piece. And this welder really does have some kick in it. 315 amps and I think max amperage is 65% duty cycle or even more, maybe even 80. So, and also I've got some angle iron in here. I think I've got 18 meters of it. And also by some 30 by 3 millimeter iron. And what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna make a table for my bandsaw. So I can put it on wheels and move it around. And also, from this iron, I'm gonna make a small cart, a trolley, I don't know what it should be called. It will be 80 by 40 centimeters and about 100 centimeters high, and it will have three surfaces. So, it will be for moving things and storing tools, and also it will be a working surface in the top. I am gonna do that after I have put the motor back together and when I have this ready. So, I think this should be called the compressor repair part 4, but I'm gonna call this something else. And the next video will be part 4. So, thank you again. Sorry for keeping you this long again. Thank you for watching and see you again. Bye.